I know we kind of all forget about you sometimes, but you're smart, compassionate. You might even make a good counselor someday. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Kenny was the best character on South Park. Kenny, what have you been up to, buddy? Did you hear? Kenny just won the Nobel Prize for combining dark matter and breast implants. Oh, you old dog. For this list, we'll be looking at Kenny McCormick's best and most iconic moments on South Park. What's your favorite Kenny moment on the show? Be sure to let us know below. Number 20. Dancing to Peruvian Music Peruvian flute bands have taken the town of South Park by storm. They can practically be seen on every corner of the street. Initially, the boys don't give it much thought. That is, until they quite literally cannot escape the music. The sole exception, however, being Kenny. I think Kenny likes it. Not once, but twice we see Kenny get down and show off his dance moves as the music plays. Viewers can't help but feel both amused and entertained at how Kenny expresses his appreciation for the music genre. Leave it to the South Park creators to have such subtle, brief, yet funny moments during scenes. Number 19. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Kyle gets sick, so naturally his best friend Stan is feeling down about it. He laments the possibility of losing his friend for good and feels powerless. If a friend died, I don't know what I'd do. This is understandable, but it ends up being in bad taste considering he's doing this in front of Kenny, who, as we all know, has passed on multiple occasions without anyone even going as far as to bat an eyelash. Furious, Kenny gets up and exclaims one of the most iconic catchphrases of the series belonging to Carpen. It's muffled, but it's another moment showcasing how iconic Kenny can be. <laughs> Number 18. Not letting Cartman have the Chin Pokemon. Chin Pokemon is the talk of the town for the children in South Park, and everyone wants a piece. When Cartman enters the town's toy store, he eventually sets his sights on buying the Chimp Pokemon toy named Penguin. He soon sees that there are none left, and the last one has been taken by Kenny. Cartman attempts to take it from him, but Kenny doesn't let up. What ensues is a hilarious tug of war between both boys. We give credit to Kenny for standing his ground and not letting Cartman have his way. Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out. Number 17 Kenny Lives Another Day. On a trip to Costa Rica, Kenny meets and develops a crush on a girl named Kelly. The relationship is up and down, to say the least, but it's fortunate that Kenny got acquainted with her. Near the end of the episode, he gets struck by lightning. Initially, we expect this to be another typical gruesome end for our favorite orange parka-wearing fourth grader, but not so fast. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! You bastards! What? Who? Who killed him? They did. Who's you know, they. They're... they're bastards. In an unexpected twist, Kelly comes to the rescue and saves his life. Alright, so while he doesn't exactly do anything here, we're just grateful and glad he survives and is able to remain alive the entire episode. Number 16. Kenny Comes Back For Good Speaking of living, you knew we had to go with his return to the show for this list. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, hey Kenny. Dude, where have you been? In season five, the creators decided to kill off the character for good after growing tired of having to find new ways to get rid of him. Fortunately, they missed his presence and decided to casually and nonchalantly bring him back at the end of season six's Red Sleigh Down. He was dearly missed, so his reappearance was a sight to behold, in turn making viewers cherish and appreciate him all the more. We just love how it was made to seem like nothing had ever happened in the first place. Come on, we gotta tell you what happened. I'm sure glad it's over with. Yeah, but I feel like things are finally back to normal. Ugh. 
Number 15. Trying to prevent his parents from having a child. After his parents tell him that they are interested in having another child, Kenny is displeased to say the least. Unable to bear what may come if this were to happen, he decides to take matters into his own hands. He does whatever he can so that his parents do not conceive, and takes drastic measures to do so. Good job, now throw me one. Oh! Oh! His schemes are childish but hilarious to say the least, but we can't help but love Kenny's determination and be thoroughly entertained. Unfortunately, it's his father who is on the painful receiving end of his son's efforts. In the end, he doesn't technically get another sibling, so we suppose that means he came out on top? Number 14. Kenny Saves the Day E-scooters have caused chaos during Halloween trick-or-treating in South Park, and it's up to Kenny and Mr. Mackey to save the day. Since the scooters are activated via telephone, they head by a cell phone tower in an effort to turn off everyone's cell phones. They manage to bring the tower down and the scooters cease to function. This pairing was the one we least expected, yet never knew we really needed. However, what truly has us in all the feels is seeing Kenny's joy of being able to trick-or-treat with his friends. It was the last Halloween that still felt like Halloween. It was the last time it was good. Number 13. Kenny Attacks Death As previously mentioned, Kenny is no stranger to death. However, Season 2's City on the Edge of Forever sees him quite literally fight back and take matters into his own hands. In a reimagined memory, boys look back on the time where they were pursued by the Grim Reaper. While Kenny in reality met his demise during the encounter, his recollection shows him confronting the figure head on and beating him up. We love the idea of Kenny changing the course of his fate and doing so in such badass fashion. It doesn't matter who you are, don't mess with Kenny. Oh my god, Kenny killed death! You bastard! Number 12, Dr. Kenny McCormick. The South Park post-COVID specials take us 40 years into the future. Viewers get a glimpse at older versions of the boys and see how they're doing in life. The only thing that comes close to being as shocking as Cartman converting to Judaism is Kenny becoming a world-renowned scientist. While most often mentioned in passing, due to, of course, not being alive in the future timeline, during the specials, fans can't help but get a kick at seeing how far Kenny has come in life. The head of NASA said, We have lost an innovator and a visionary. Kenny was so brilliant that most of the time, we couldn't even understand what he was saying. Oh yeah, and not to mention the fact that he was the primary force behind finding a cure for COVID and discovering time travel. What a guy. He says he hopes you guys are watching this. He spent his whole life trying to fix your broship and then realized this was the only way because you guys suck. Number 11, Spin Blossom Nut Squash. While attempting to help Chef, the boys are captured by the Super Adventure Club, the group which the former joined after leaving South Park. Learning of the club's true intentions, the club's leader calls security to get them off the premises. But before being escorted out, the boys retaliate and decide to rescue their friend. How do they dispose of the Super Adventure Club member guarding Chef, might you ask? Like this. Kenny, spin blossom nut squash. This totally came from left field, and we didn't even know Kenny was capable of such a maneuver. Number 10. Sabotaging Cartman's NASCAR Career For some strange reason, Cartman believes that being incompetent and impoverished means you have the talent of becoming the best NASCAR driver. I'm stupid enough to do NASCAR, and I never will be! Dude, I don't think just poor and stupid people like NASCAR. Oh, really? Hey, hey, Kenny! Huh? You love NASCAR, huh? <laughs> Being the super fan that he is, Kenny takes great offense to this and refuses to let Cartman get away with his insulting beliefs while potentially succeeding as a NASCAR driver. 
And so, Kenny takes it upon himself to sabotage his friend's races, going so far as to try and bring a sniper rifle with him and even leaping onto the track mid-race. You can't bring a sniper rifle onto the track. Oh, come on! Look, NASCAR's trying to change its image. It's people like you that are giving NASCAR a bad name. Oh, <laughs> You might be able to buy one in the gift shop. Though his attempts are unsuccessful, Cartman's career does crash and burn in the most humiliating way possible. Sorry, dude, I'm winning this race. With the break. Bye, Kitty. Number nine, Picture Day. Dude, check it out. For Picture Day, Kenny got into his parka backwards so that his ass shows through his hood. Look, Kenny, Kenny, over here. <laughs> <laughs> Just like with any other school, there's always one kid who has to pull something ridiculous for picture day, and Kenny has the best idea. For his photos, Kenny has put his clothes on in such a way that his butt ends up where his face should be. Hilarious? Oh, a hundred percent! But the joke stops being funny to Cartman once a couple mistakes Kenny's photo for their missing son. So sweet. You guys said it is so sweet. God damn it, Cartman, what? And yes, these grieving parents also have rear ends for faces. Honestly, our biggest question was, how come none of the other adults noticed Kenny was pulling a prank on them? Apparently, one of you thinks it's fun to spoil their school pictures and thinks he's a comedian. That person will be spending the afternoon in the principal's office. Oh, that's so cool. School photos aren't for joking around, so you aren't getting your photos back, butters. Number eight, working at CityWalk. But, Mommy, they have ice cream. We can't afford $10 ice cream, all right? If you want nice things, then go out and get a job. For Kenny McCormick, life is hard. His parents are drunks, and there never seems to be enough money for proper meals and a decent childhood. And so, he takes it upon himself to get a job at CityWalk. How Mr. Kim managed to get away with child labor is beyond us. I like you, Dennis. You work real hard. I wish I could give you more. Luckily, he does pay Kenny, and we soon find out why Kenny took the job to begin with. With what little cash he managed to earn from Mr. Kim, Kenny buys a doll for his sister. What a sweet big brother. <laughs> Wow. This is mine? No, come on, come on. Number seven, saving Hawaii. The only kitty with any sense of dignity is Kenny, and the rest of you have your heads up your butts. Well, apparently Kenny is Butter's best friend. You guys gonna make out, Kenny? On account of Butters being angry with everyone but him, Kenny somehow ends up having to go to Hawaii for Butters' Hapanoa. Unfortunately, a series of events leads the Hawaiians to believe that Kenny might bring an end to them, forcing him to prove himself as a Hawaiian. Then let him prove himself. Trial by Opaika'a. Though he disappoints with his surfing skills, Kenny manages to turn things around with a little bit of help from Elvis Presley and a large supply of beverages. With the Hawaiians having more ingredients for Chi Chi's, Kenny successfully saves the islands. The hell we did it! Number six, owning in Magic the Gathering. Gadnock Breaker of Worlds plays a creature card. Jesus, Paragon of Fierce Defiance. Now every red creature Gadnock plays will have a plus one attack. If you've ever played Magic the Gathering, you'll know how complex of a game it can become. What with decades worth of cards made since 1993. However, we didn't anticipate Kenny to be the MTG master between the boys. I can block that with Uprooted Minotaur. Oh! Serendip Sorcerer unblocked. Winner McCormick. Throughout the episode, Kenny obliterates his opponents with all of the powerful cards in his deck, and he does so with great confidence. Doesn't matter if you have been playing for years or if you are only a chicken, Kenny makes it clear that he has the perfect deck assembled, and he is prepared to wipe the floor with you. Oh! There is Terra Stomper! This is absolute savagery! Frigid Goblin has been sent to the graveyard, and now there is no one to block Pearl Lake Ancient! Number five, commanding Heaven's Army. This golden PSP is king of all PSPs. Hail the holy PSP! It works just like the ones we sent to Earth. 
All the commands you make will be sent to the troops down on the battlefield. All Kenny wants to do is play his brand new PSP and conquer the game Heaven vs. Hell. He's so enthralled with his game that he practically shuts out the entire world, which gets himself hit by an ice cream truck. Oh yeah, level four, sweet! Surprisingly, his PSP skills will be put to the test as the real Heaven is about to be invaded by Hell's army. And so, God appoints him as the commander of Heaven's forces. Basically, Kenny, you are Keanu Reeves. As expected, Kenny does not disappoint and manages to fend off Satan and his minions, though it did come with some casualties. We have done it! We have defeated the armies of Satan! Yeah. Number four, protecting Karen. But I'm all alone now. You are not alone. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I will always be here. As we saw in the episode where Kenny works at City Walk, he is one of the best brothers we've seen on television. An absolute role model. This side of Kenny is shown once more in the episode The Poor Kid, where he dons his Mysterion persona. Karen is having trouble fitting into her new school and is about to get beat up by Jessica Pinkerton. Who the hell is this? How about you find another little girl to pick on? Luckily, Kenny comes in to save the day. He not only gives the meanie a taste of her own medicine, but he also grabs Karen to bring her to safety. Big brother of the century, folks. Number three, becoming a princess. Princess Kitty, tomodachi de kaerimasu! For some reason, Kenny does not desire to be a barbarian, a ranger, or even a cleric. No, when the boys are playing Game of Thrones, Kenny wants to be a princess. Sounds absurd, yes, but it isn't until much later when we understand why he had this ambition. To aid Kenny and his army in the console war, tech company Sony gives Kenny what he needs to become a true princess. Princess Kenny Konosu With Sony's medallion, Kenny possesses the powers of a true magical anime princess and proceeds to stop entire shipments of Xbox consoles. We have a feeling this was all just to give Cartman the bird. He did what? He flew down in a parachute and he what? Apparently, he stopped Microsoft from blockading the shipment of PS4s to the wall. Number two, being a true superhero. But even the other heroes do not know that unlike them, I do have a power. A power they will now begin to understand. And all will know who and what I truly am. When it comes to playing superheroes, Kenny is much, much different than the rest of the kids. See, the kids don their superhero personas because they're simply pretending to be superheroes. Kenny, on the other hand, does possess a superpower, being unable to truly die. Because there are some superpowers that make yours look like nothing. Trust me, I know. What, what is your power? I can't die. Under the guise of Mysterion, he actually uses this as a means to legitimately fight crime, acting as the Dark Knight to South Park's Gotham. Kenny is absolutely the hero we don't deserve, but the hero South Park needs. Who the F and H is that? What does it mean? That is not dead which can eternal lie. Number one. Convincing Satan to dump Saddam Hussein. Meet Saddam Hussein, my new partner in evil. What? Move over, Satan. You're hogging all the fun. Satan is trapped in a toxic relationship with former dictator Saddam Hussein. Whereas the Dark Lord wants something serious, Hussein wants only one thing. Things take a turn for the worse when Terence and Philip are executed, fulfilling a prophecy that will allow Satan and his army to invade Earth. However, Kenny gets some one-on-one -on -one with Satan a few times, telling him to ditch Hussein so he may live a better life. You're right. I should leave him. I'm just gonna tell him, Saddam, I'm going to Earth to rule alone. I'm strong, and I don't need him. 
At the film's climax, Satan finally reaches his breaking point and hurls Hussein off a cliff. As thanks for building his confidence, Satan lets Kenny make one request, no stipulations. Kenny, being the kind soul that he is, simply wishes for everything to return to normal, thus saving South Park and the world. Yeah, thanks for going back to hell for us. You're a real pal. Goodbye, you guys. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.